Today on Business Success in Six with Stacy, I have Leanne Lovely here from Love Your Sales in the greater Milwaukee area. Leanne, thanks for jumping on with me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited to interview you. We have a great relationship. I've learned a lot about you, your business through the Brookfield Chamber, and you know how to sell. You know how to talk to people. You know how to build relationships. You do so much in the community for businesses. Can we talk about Love Your Sales? Absolutely. I'm excited to do so. All right, here we go. When people ask you how you describe love your sales, how do you describe your business? <laughs> it's all over the place, but um, <laughs> love your sales is really a um, one-stop shop for um, scaling your business um, or e assisting with a launch of a product or um, event. So um, I'm a fractional sales individual who comes in and helps consult on different areas within your business, um, whether that be putting the right tools in place, putting the right people in place, or making sure that your salespeople are on revenue generating tasks. Love it. You know what else I love? I love the reality that sales, everybody's selling. And that's what people, when they hear the word sales, they're like, oh, there's so many brick walls that all of a sudden are built when they hear the word sales. But truly everybody is selling a product, a service, a mindset, you know, any of that. And, and that's what we have to wrap our minds around is like, it, sales are not bad. You have to love your sales, right? Right. At any given time um, within your organization, if you're not continuing to manage your reputation, you could be possibly doing damage to your business. If you have disgruntled employees, they may be out there creating a negative, um, you know, negative, uh, when it, what's the word that I'm looking yes. for? Yes, a reputation. But if you're creating a really positive, awesome environment for your employees, they are actually out there selling your business either as um, you know the product that you have or selling it as a great place to work. So no matter what you know what you do, if you think, oh, I don't need sales, I don't need to understand what sales are, then you are completely like you've got your head in the sand because um, every aspect of of a relationship in some way is that you're you truly are selling. you're selling yourself. You're selling um, the idea of of what your business does, a product. Um, for instance, you know we all know here in Milwaukee we have um, you know different fairs. We have one that's the state fair. Everybody knows about the cream puffs. Everybody, people who come to Wisconsin will say, "What is with these cream puffs that everybody talks about?" The reason that they are so popular is because people eat them, then talk about how great they are. They don't have to sell because they have everybody in Wisconsin selling for them because they've created this persona about them. That's the kind of reputation that you want to create in every aspect of your business from the people who are cleaning, you know, cleaning the, the facility. If you treat them amazingly, they will go tell somebody like, Hey, this is a great place to work. And then when somebody is looking for a job, they're like, hey, maybe I should go work there. That is a form of selling your business. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh. I love that. Yeah. I love that you brought up the cream puff and, and truly, I mean, I, and then my brain went to like dating, even when you're out on a date, you're selling yourself, you're, you're who you are, you know, it, it's just absolutely sales are necessary and everybody's doing it. So again, why not love them and learn how to treat your customers, your employees, anybody that is in, around you or has exposure to your business, train them, teach them, love them. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And if, and that's the whole premise of love your sales. I know sales, I love sales and you should love your sales too. Um, it's just a different mindset. It's a different shift of, you know, and I've heard, I've heard people in businesses, I've heard production say, God, I hate the salesperson. Well, without the salesperson, you don't have a job. Now, is it a matter of shifting on how we communicate with each other, speaking the same language? Absolutely. It's just a matter of figuring out how does the salesperson communicate with production and how does production communicate with sales to make sure that we have a cohesive team that's happy when a new biz, you know, when a new sales come, when a new sale comes in so that the company is continuing to scale instead of have this constant battle. And it's, it's unnecessary, but it exists in every industry across the board, but we need to fix that. Yes. Well, and that's what you are doing. So what were your plans when you started your business and how have they changed? <laughs> oh, they've changed drastically. Um, 
you know, I, um, I was in a state of, of flux back, um, prior to launching my business in January of 2023. And, um, I thought I'm going to be an independent contractor. I will go help some businesses, you know, do some sales here and there. And January I launched and I thought I'm just, I'll do a fraction of sales. I'll help with some tools. And from that point, um, it was probably not until maybe March where all of a sudden this vision went, wait a second, I can, I can help companies from the solepreneur all the way to them growing and scaling to when they have a full-blown team in place. Mm-hmm. And then and and I I I'm I'm making this you know rainbow thing because in my head it was, you know there are so many different areas and so many aspects that as you grow and scale, you start to see the pain points like we were just talking. You yeah. start start to grow scale and then you have that that push and pull of production. So the training and development came in. The um the data optimization came in where all of a sudden two years down the line you're like wait my database is just, it, it, people have been on the move. And now I've got my sales team doing data entry in order to update the CRM. And so this vision probably a couple of months in came where I thought I can start working with somebody from the beginning all the way through the life of their business in various aspects. And that was my goal was to not just create a transactional relationship as a fractional salesperson, which is typically the way that it is, mm-hmm. but to it create, happen, right? It doesn't have to be, but to create a relationship that would be for the long term, and come into that business as needed, when needed, for the life of their business. And so, from what my vision was in the beginning, it has drastically changed. But I am a relationship seller. Yep. On top of also being a hardcore salesperson, I am very much a relationship builder. Yeah. And you can have both. You can be hardcore and be the best relationship builder ever. So, and you are yes. definitely that. So thank you. So Leanne, what is the biggest way you impact the community? I mean, there are so many ways that you're out in the community. What do you think the biggest way is? Yeah. On top of it being part of my business, um, you know, to go out and sell, um, I still do the networking. I still do, you know, my husband, my husband will say to me, like, what's that look on your face? You're doing that thing. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, well, you just said X. And I'm like, and because that it made my brain think of this, which made my brain think of this. And I need to make an introduction to this person because, and he goes, how did you make a connection? Because I said ice cream sundaes. And I'm like, "I, I don't know. But it just triggered me to think that I need to do that really quick. And I'm like, I, I don't know why my brain thinks this way, but there are certain in you know, there are certain triggers. And um I just I'm constantly thinking of how I can connect people. So on top of yes, it being my job to, you know, sell and and make connections and and network, I'm also um constantly thinking of how I can help other people just, you know, organically and, and connect people and, um, you know, help in the community any way that I can. Absolutely. And we see that. Yeah. Relationships that you build are, they're not just in one little square. They, they travel all over and I've seen that time and time again. So well, I love this interview with you, Leanne. And they always say, everybody always says, but we forget sometimes always give before you get and as much as people will say it, we sometimes forget that when we walk up to somebody, we'll ask for something. We we need to remember that when we walk, and I do it too, I'm guilty. We walk up and we'll say, oh, hey, do you think you could? The first thing that we shouldn't, we, we shouldn't be walking up. We need to walk up to somebody and say, how are you doing? Is there anything that I can do for you today? Yes. And then let that conversation unfold. And then if there's something that you need, or you, you know, you have an ask, let that organically unfold and say, Hey, do you think I can ask you something? Because the person's going to be in, uh, you know, defensive. If you walk up and say, Hey, Stacy, do you think you could do X, Y, Z for me? You're going to go, Jeez. 
one more thing to do. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like I, I'll, let me add that to my checklist of 800 other things that I need to do. Totally. But if you're allowing that person to warm up and talk and be disarmed, and then you, you know, ask them, Hey, by the way, I was wondering if you could, you know, assist me or help me. I'm trying to, you know, get in contact with somebody that, you know, you're going to be a lot more disarmed and be like, Oh yeah, not a problem. Absolutely. Well, I think, I mean, we, we talk about that from raising children all the way up to, to retail sales or whatever it might be is asking that permission, allowing them to, to have control or, and sometimes think they have control when it's really a two-way street. Both of you have control of it, you know, but just asking permission goes a really long way. I'm glad that you brought that up. Yeah. So what is one challenge that you have faced? We've already talked about some of the challenges, but what is one challenge you have faced that other business owners can learn from? <laughs> um, you know, and this is still something I do. Um, you know, it's probably something that I'm going to struggle with. I think that every business owner probably struggles with a little bit is getting out of my own way. Mm -hmm. Um, and I regularly have to, um, check myself. Um, but, and I just recently had a conversation with somebody else about this. Um, I get so wound up and so hyper-focused on, on certain things that are non-revenue generating, which Boom. I, I preach this to my clients. Like that is not important right now. Yeah. You need to focus on X, Y, Z revenue generating tasks at this moment in time. Um, and for me, it was getting out of my own way and not being so hyper-focused on, I have to have this be perfect. I have to have this be perfect, especially in the small business ownership world. Yes. When you're the solopreneur or you're, you know, a two person business, who cares if you don't have a website, if you have a client, Absolutely. who cares if you don't have, you know, this perfect system in place or an, a, an SOP, if you're a, a one person business, there are certain things that you can let sit for a short period of time yeah. when you're in that, you know, very small, when you start to scale, yeah, then you need to start, you know, putting processes in place, but making that money in order to have, you know, some dollars coming in so that you can actually bring somebody in to assist you. Yeah. So my, my greatest challenge was definitely getting out of my own way and realizing that I can't be perfect all the time. And then putting the people, my people in place, having somebody to go and cry to that wasn't going to give me advice, having the person that I needed to give me advice and going to that person, having the person who wasn't going to let me sit and cry <laughs> and kick my butt and say, okay, enough is enough. Totally. Um, so knowing my people, knowing who my people were, um, and then knowing, um, knowing myself well enough, um, and having self-awareness was really, really important. Absolutely. You know, and I just heard there's a new book out called The Mountain Is You. It, it, I I can't wait to read that one because so many of us struggle with that same thing as being in our own way. And, you know, one of our coaches said 80% done is better than 95% unfinished. So when you're when when you say, OK, I'm going to I'm going to do this 80%. This is done. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to grow from it and I can change it. But if you're just sitting there and not creating that revenue, you can't sustain a business, right? So. Correct. Right. And, and, and I remember the day where I kept saying to somebody, well, I got to get my website done. I got to get my website done. And somebody looked at me and goes, put under construction and be done. And I went, oh, well, well, what about, and they said, you have a client, right? I said, well, I have two. They said, all right, so go do the work and make some money and then hire somebody. And I went, I can do that. And oh. they're like, well, yeah. And I went, 
oh my God. And I remember that night, my shoulders just went, oh, oh my God, because you have this perception that it has to be done a certain way. And when somebody gives you permission to not have to do it the way everybody else or the way you think everybody else is doing it, you go, oh, okay. Uh huh. Right. It's that aha moment of, and that's what I did. I put under constructions for two months. And then when I had gotten some money in the door and I had finished up with one of my clients, all of a sudden I went, I have a couple of hours and I made one page there and then go. I got another page done. And now I have a very decent website that will one day be redone by a professional. Yes. That the expert in that industry, you're the, again, right. expert in those sales. Oh my gosh. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. So what does the future look like to you? And do you have an exit plan? Yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure that I'm, have the exit plan what the future looks right now because i'm so early on um i'm planning to scale my my i am looking to scale and and maybe i do i mean i have an idea of of i guess the exit um i have a five-year-old it would be my dream to be able to pass on this business to her cool. but god knows what she's going to be interested in she may want to be a professional clown um and i'll support her in it <laughs> if that's what she wants um, still being a clown right, right. <laughs> but um i mean i'm i'm i want to scale i i already have pieces in place to how i'm going to do that um and my goal is to i'm workaholic which is not a good thing by any means um i need to find a little bit more work life balance and over the next 2 years that is part of the plan is to be able to scale, bring on um, an assistant and bring on another salesperson um, so that I can find a little bit more balance and be able to, you know, take a vacation. Um, and then, you know, long-term be able to grow this so that it's, um, that I can actually step out and, um, you know, have others be able to run my business. Well, and I think that's a, a really, hard thing as a salesperson we constantly are thinking about stuff we're constantly thinking about relationships we're constantly thinking about introductions and so it is hard to shut down especially when you're when you're who you are so i don't i don't you know i i find balance is extremely important but i guarantee when you're sitting on the beach in the dominican republic you're going to be thinking about other people because that's just how you're wired and that's okay right right <laughs> You know, we get as salespeople, we think, well, nobody could do it like I can do it, or nobody can do it better than than me. That's that that kind of that chip on my shoulder of, well, I'm really good at what I do. But the reality is that nobody is is you know is un irreplaceable. Yeah. Somebody there is somebody else out in the world that can do exactly what I can do differently. Right. Maybe it could be, it could be like you and you hope that, right? You hope right. that in that person to be better like just like right. raising kids we want our kids to be better than us and right yeah so cool so my final question for you today leanne is all subjects open what inspires you most yeah um you know people that know me um people that listen to you know my podcast um know that i'm a huge supporter of mental health um it's part of part of the things that I get involved in, in, in my community, part of the things that I really support and my dream one day would be to be able to give more back to uh, the community on the mental health side, because I myself suffer from um, bipolar disorder. I've been able to be stable um, for many, you know, over a decade um, of stability on that. But um, I, I just find so much, um, satisfaction in being able to um you know, talk about that openly now um and do what I can to help others who are struggling through talking about that and and even just talking to others when they are struggling getting a phone call from a friend um or somebody in my network who says I don't know who else to talk with I don't know who who 
you know, who else has experienced this. Um, so, you know, being part of, you know, communities, um, nonprofits that are on a war path to try to make it more public that this is not a disease you can catch. This is something that we need to talk about and we need to normalize this conversation. Oh, um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that. What? Well, oh, you're not alone. Like we're yeah. like, yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's one of the gifts that you have too. That's so inspiring is that because you build those relationships with people and you truly care, you're able to be that safe place, whether it's in business or personal. And you can see that it's so inspiring, man. Yeah. Yeah. That at the end of the day, I, um, I want to empower more men and women. Um, it's not just about women. It's because their men are, um, just as, uh, affected by, um, mental health. And, um, so there's, if there's any way that I can help support, uh, I'm all about supporting that. So if somebody wants to work with you, Leanne, support you to support their business and love their sales, what's the best way for them to connect with you? Yeah. So I'm all over LinkedIn, but, um, my website is, uh, loveyoursales.com and they can reach out to me in multiple ways from my, my website. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time today for normalizing so many things, including sales. I absolutely had a wonderful time talking to you. Good luck in the future. I know you're going to do great things. Thank you so much for, for doing this. It was an awesome conversation, Stacey. I, I just, I absolutely love you. Absolutely. Right back at you. <laughs> Bye.